Hey there, uh, w welcome to jo Joint Failures. Um, Hi. Kind of a big episode. Uh, we, uh, we, we got to talk about a few things. I mean, we got some tech stories. Googlebot yeah. Gizmo 5, and th that's great. And there's a few other things. And uh, we got some media stuff and, you know, video games and crap. But uh, we decided to debate global, war global warming th this uh -huh. episode. And, uh, Sounds so good. We kind of went a little too far. But uh, <laughs> stick around. It's going to be a, a great episode. And uh, welcome to Joint Failures. Okay. Skin on skin, Chris. Come on. Body warmth. All right. It's my show! Joint Failures. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Joint Failures. My name is Chris, and that right there... Also Chris. No, not John. At all. It's John. That's John. Okay. See, he tricked you for a second. You fooled all those people. So, Joint Failures, what's this show about? Nah, I got no idea. We just kind of fail right along with you, talk about different topics mm -hmm. that we find interesting. Right. Some tech stuff, some media stuff, some... Just news stuff, some politics stuff. We dabble in failing on discussing politics, and this is a big one this episode. We're going to talk about... Uh, We're going to fail in a major way talking about global fail warming. Fail all over our microphone. Right, We're right. going to talk about Embarrass it. Embarrass ourselves completely. And um, one of the things that uh, we, we definitely uh, like to do in this show is get your feedback, your comments. We mm -hmm. really want to hear from you. Right. And there's a few different ways. I'll just mention at the top of the show so we don't forget. You can always comment over at jupiterbroadcasting.com on the show post. Mm -hmm. You can hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash right. jupiterbroadcasting. There's also Twitter. I am twitter.com slash Chris L A S. Right. And people I'm your friend John. There you have it. Mm -hmm. And any any way that you would like to get a hold of us, it can be done. Right. And uh, oh, and there's also the form at jupitercolony.com. There. Yeah. And uh, you can uh, leave a comment in there for joint failures. So we can hear your feedback and then we kind of morph the show around mm -hmm. all the stupid crap that you tell us. Right. All right. Well, why don't we jump into the tech section and we'll leave okay. we'll leave global warming down the road. We'll get we'll get to it here, but mm -hmm. the top story on our tech section because well, it affects me personally, and that's <laughs> why I podcast. Wow. Uh, Google has acquired Gizmo Five now. John, do you know what Gizmo is? Yes, I do. It's like Skype. It's like Skype. So the Gizmo project's been around for a little while, and it's gone through some changes, some transformation. Uh huh. And um, how it, is it now? It uh, you know it's it stack up against its competitors. It's, it's struggled to, to compete against Skype. I I, okay. I won't lie to you. Some people say the Skype's quality is a little better. Uh, some people like Gizmo because it uses an open protocol called SIP instead of Skype's proprietary protocol. Right. So Gizmo integrates a little better with like phone systems and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the uh, Gizmo project was in talks with with uh, eBay to be bought out when there was some go goings back some force about um, the owners, the original creators of Skype still own some of like the fundamental Skype technology. Right. And they were kind of jerking eBay around and eBay was kind of jerking them around. So eBay's like, well, we need a, we need a plan B if the Skype thing, you know, that we spent billions of dollars falls out. Uh -huh. So maybe we'll buy this gizmo thing. And then they started working things out with Skype. And so they dropped gizmo like it's hot. And right. so like Google Snoop came, Google, yep. Google came back in for sloppy seconds uh -huh. and uh, bought them up. Now, Right. What's interesting Rebound. about this is Google has Google Voice mm -hmm. and Google Talk. So this just fits right into that platform, doesn't it? Well, it, what's, what kind of blows my mind a little bit is uh, Gizmo has, Gizmo 5 is, the te is actually what it's called, mm -hmm. has all of the back-end technology to take a IP phone call, a totally digital phone call, connect, you know, so if you're calling, so you mm. want to make a call from your computer and you want to talk to somebody in New York and you're in California, mm -hmm. Gizmo 5 already has all the technology and relationships in place to make that call, make the connection over uh, the internet, and then to a landline POTS, uh, plain old telephone station at the location you're calling, mm -hmm. and then go over traditional lines. Like they've bridged that gap really well. Now Google obviously can do that, but uh, they've had, they've actually been having some issues in different areas and Gizmo already kind of has that whole thing um, kind of all wrapped up. And what that means is Google can now bypass the big boys that own the, the wide networks. Right. So Google's able to give the finger to guys like AT&T and... Take that. Yeah. Now, this actually brings up something else that's kind of related to this. But um, as far as like Google on the droid and stuff and Google's... Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, and the, and I'm going gonna, gonna to totally massacre this, but here's what the issue is. All right. Some of the, the communication providers are upset about this because they're saying, you know what, Google is a communication provider now. Right. And one of the things that Google's doing is actually blocking a lot of numbers that go into the Midwest. Yeah. Have you heard about this? Yeah. Because there is uh, legal to charge more for calls. Right. So you have like all of the conference calls go to like, I think on NPR they're saying like a town of like 8,000 gets like 8 million calls yeah, yeah. a month or something like that. Yeah, it's all yeah. because of that. So there's like a lawsuit kind of in the works against mm -hmm. Google saying that 
because Google, sorry, because Google is blocking these numbers, right? Making it free. Yeah. So, and, and they're saying no, you can't do that. And I wonder if this will kind of contribute to that. Well, and Google has dabbled. Uh, do you remember? Uh, like it was like a year and a half ago or so. There was like this whole. Uh, spectrum space that was opening up because analog TV was going away or something like that. And so everybody mm-hmm. was going to bid on it and Google was one of the companies that bid on it. Um, and uh, they've, so they've been kind of butting heads with the telephone industry for a little while now. Right. And so what they just basically have done is said, all right, well, we're just going to get around you. We're mm-hmm. not going to go over your landlines until we have to. What's funny though is a lot of these, not all of them, but mm-hmm. a lot of these uh, companies that own the phone networks also own the data networks. Right. So they're not really getting away from them, but it's, you know, a lot of these companies, if you've worked with them before, it's like the data side of the company is not allowed to speak to the telephone side. They can't even like pass notes in the hallway. It's like totally mm-hmm. separate companies. So it's an interesting thing. And, and it also brings up, of course, the privacy aspect. Because whenever Google has something, you have to start asking yourself, all right, so they're obviously logging and indexing. Right. And it all comes down with Google, it all comes down to ad dollars. You know, it all mm-hmm. comes down to marketing. Right. Uh, you know, for the most part, at the end of the day, that's how Google, you know, makes, makes their money. money. Yeah. yeah. And so you've got to kind of wonder how that works. And I am a Google Voice user and I love the service. It was, you know, had some problems a couple of weeks ago, but, you know, in I general, it's okay. Oh, yeah. It's, it's so great for a guy like me, one phone. But, you know, I share that number with clients. I share that number with coworkers, friends, family. And mm-hmm. I can give them all different voicemails, different routing options to different phones. It's, a, it's amazing. Well, it's great. But, you know, I, Google knows every time I get a phone call. Google transcribes and indexes every voicemail I get. And there was a leak uh, a week ago mm-hmm. of Google uh, voicemails that were marked uh, in, in, like a certain type of public setting that then got out in the public web. So people doing web searches were getting people's voicemail transcribes. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's issues there. And uh-huh. uh, this is a it, – it's a market that uh, – uh, you know, is really well established. The phone company market is this well-built industry, and you've got to wonder if Google steps into it, there's going to be a ramp-up time. And and phone oh, services yeah. aren't like one of those things where you know uh, it can be unavailable. Right. You know. Right. You, uh, just, you, you need it. Homie needs to make a nine one one call when he needs to make a nine one one. So with this purchase call, of, of Gizmo, I mean, it's maybe it's delaying this 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 fight that's going to happen, but it's it's inevitable. I or mean. or it's their it's their it's their uh, backup plan. If, right. if this maybe, fight goes maybe. bad and they and they're like, well, we can't use these traditional phone lines. Mm-hmm. Plus, you got to figure they're probably spending a lot of money to route calls. Oh yeah. So this is you know if you can turn those from physical calls. Not that they're already doing this. Just they're already route a lot of Google Voice over the net. Mm-hmm. But there's certain restrictions and areas where they still have, end up having to go over uh, physical traditional lines. And I'm sure they pay out the. Butthole I'm sure they do, yeah. yeah. So, all right, well, we'll get back to Google in a second, but before we move on to Google, I wanted to mention a new site that's come up that I thought was kind of cool. Uh, it's, mm-hmm. it's an interesting idea. It's kind of like the new version of Metacritic in a way. Right, which we talked about not to, uh, in one our second your, episode. One of your rad sites, yeah. Second or, or first. Which, not to take away from, from Metacritic, is a great mm-hmm. service, but Twit Critics uh, has come out and... Uh, uh, you know. So basically, Metacritic, you get all these professional critics, but what if you just it, want... It, it aggregates them all in one spot. Right, right, right. So, but what if you just want your everyday general person's view? And you, you know, know, you don't care what a critic says. You want to know what your buddy thinks about it. A ton of people like leave the movie and they're like, oh, I just went and saw uh, Surrogates. Boy, did that suck. And they right. send it. And so <laughs> we what, both did that. Yeah. <laughs> so what uh, Twit Critics does is it goes out and it uses the uh, Twitter search API to monitor like movie names and then the phrases people are saying and then brings all that data in and gives it a, a, a percentage of uh, you know likes or dislikes mm-hmm. and gives a little bar graph and so it's not it's not super in depth at first mm-hmm. glance it just lets you see all right so I basically just, what so so it's it's kind of searching for keywords and yeah. different tweets and when you hover over it you get a pop up of what people are saying and you can click on it and get mm-hmm. and get like actual uh, the actual uh, tweets that the data was derived from. Right. Um, and uh, so, you know, it, and they also let you uh, kind of dig style, um, mm-hmm. mark something down or mark something up if it sucks. And so that kind of helps self-correct the system. It's not as good, I would say. It's not as in-depth as Metacritic, but it's a very quick snapshot. Right. If you're, if, and it, it also would fit, it, the, the width of the page would fit really well on a mm-hmm. mobile browser. If you're, you know, like, you know, oh, crap, let's go see a movie, dude. And at the same time, maybe it's a better marker because you have way more people tweeting than you do oh, critics yeah, on Medicare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you're going to get a better idea of what the general public likes. Yeah, I think it's an interesting idea. And Norbit. It's, it's, a, it's like, you know, it's one more way to mine that there is some significant data in Twitter. Like, uh-huh. uh, all, you know, like a lot of us, you know, found out about the Michael Jackson uh, death mm-hmm. via Twitter. Through like, Twitter. Yeah. And, you know, and I think this is, I mean, this is just 
one of a million different things you can do with this information on Twitter. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, this is you can mine a lot of information. You know way. what I really want to see? I, and maybe it's out there. And if somebody else knows about this and they and they could hook me up, uh, like a traffic, like like this twit critics for movies only for traffic. And mm-hmm. then let me filter by city, so I can do Seattle, and right. then I can see what people are saying about Seattle. Traffic, traffic. sucks, Seattle. Because In like Seattle traffic sucks. Sometimes it takes 15, 20 minutes before like the news gets it, or the or the Washington State Department's web page gets it, mm-hmm. where even though they're not supposed to, somebody sitting in traffic jam will fire fire open their iPhone and be like, "This effing four hundred five, it's always effing backed up right here at Bothell. Send." Right, and then I can you know check it before I head out the door. And you be search like, oh. for keywords, you search for cities, you search and for can, anything you want, I can and do you that can get manually. that manually. You know, I can do that uh-huh. manually now, but it <clears throat> seems like there's if this kind of system would be perfect for that. There's you can all kinds find out. Data. Think about all the stuff you can find out. You could find out like which which like cities people hook up the most in. You can find out like everything oh, yeah. you want. I mean, it's where people are taking the most dumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. People, people share. I mean, they <laughs> overshare, and if they're going to overshare, you might as well put it to use. Where's everybody eating the most sandwiches? Let's find right. that out because that's a uh-huh. common one. I just had a sandwich. You can find best restaurants. You can find everything oh, if you do this. this restaurants way. would be great. Again, if mm-hmm. you could if you could dial it down by city. Now you could always go to Twitter and manually do the search parameters and stuff. But mm-hmm. I like this. I think this is a neat idea. Yeah. So. All right, so that's Twit Critics, and that's over at twitcritics.com. Mm-hmm. It's spelled just like you'd think this week in tech, critics.com. So uh, if uh, you want to check it out, you can. Now, <laughs> let's go back to Google just for a second. Okay. And let's talk about um, the Google Dashboard. I'm totally ready to talk Have about Have you it. heard about the Google Dashboard, John? Yes, you told me about it 10 minutes before the show. Yeah, you bet, buddy. So <laughs> uh, I mentioned the privacy thing when we were talking about the... Uh, Google uh, buying Gizmo and how right. you know it's a little creepy, although they do know about me. And one of the things Google has done to probably help alleviate, but yet also creep me out even more, is they have established <laughs> Thanks, they have established this dashboard. And what this is is all of your accounts that Google uh, either owns or knows about, uh-huh. uh, they bring all into one page, and it's right. just one big ass list of all the stuff that you use through Google. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything. Thanks, big bra. Yeah, <laughs> big bra. Uh, everything from your calendar alerts, a blogger account, mm-hmm. yeah, Gmail stats, docs, all that kind of stuff. But what they do, even even the gadgets on your Google customer It's all in there. Page, it's all it's in nuts. There. Uh, but what they do is, uh, and, and actually they're adding more stuff. They don't mm-hmm. have Google. You know, you don't. I never really like realized how many effing properties. Products they have? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, a, a couple a of lot. things, a couple of big things that uh-huh. Google doesn't yet have on this dashboard, but does own. And I have accounts for these: is Google Analytics, Google Checkout, which you know is kind of popular for oh, buying yeah. stuff. AdSense, AdWords, um, the browser sync functionality they're bringing into Chrome. Uh, all these different uh, kind of things that uh, uh, are also really good information. Uh, YouTube videos, mm-hmm. information, all this stuff. They have some YouTube stuff in there. They're going to amp it up. Right. It's so it pretty much just shows you your account with Google, pretty much. Right. Like. But here is w- so that's creepy. <laughs> wow, I've gotten a lot of phone calls on Google Voice. Uh, here's what's creepy, but also good to know mm-hmm. is in the dashboard there is this innocent little icon next to some of the names, and it's it's an icon of like three people, three little heads, three heads and shoulders. Mm-hmm. And whenever you see the three heads and shoulders symbol next to a product name, uh, a Google product, that means that whatever that information is is publicly available to anyone on the web. And that's good to know. That's I mean, really good to that's know. That's what you want to. Kind of keep track of. Yeah. So, like here, I'm being told my Picasa account is currently enabled for uh, web viewing. So, what if you want to turn that off? There you know, is, are there privacy settings you can mess right, with? Right next to it, they have a link to manage the privacy settings where I can change, uh, you know, to maybe I want to flip that to private. Mm-hmm. This is a great way to sort of audit right. my all my Google stuff, which honestly is so much stuff. Mm-hmm. I had forgotten about some of this right. stuff. And Google will still know, but not I everyone even, else will know. Like, uh, uh, I don't know how you pronounce this, but it's A, it's O R K U T Orchid. I didn't even know I had an Orchid account, and I didn't even know Google owned them. That, oh, that's right. Oh yeah. So, yeah, uh, uh, so good to know, and uh, good to know <laughs> that it is public. There so <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's nice. Uh-huh. Um, anyways, so I'm sure there's not a human being on the face of the planet that doesn't have a Google account. Even the people in like the uh, third world countries probably have Google accounts. They just don't know it. Um, at least they're on Google images somewhere in some satellite mm-hmm. pictures. So Google Dashboard, and you can find that over at google.com slash dashboard. Definitely worth checking out. All right. Cool. So I think we'll keep the tech section kind of brief because we got the global warming topic, and that's a big right. discussion. Well, we'll see. 
we'll, we'll see. see. We'll, we'll see. be like, I don't also know. might be thirty seconds. Be, yeah. So, uh, uh, what do you think? I don't know. What do yeah. you think? I don't know. Boy, that would suck, huh? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right. So the media. We'll just couple couple things in in, in the media section. Um, we mentioned a couple episodes ago that the PS3 was going to be getting Netflix Watch instantly streaming. Yes, we did. And, uh, and it happened. And it happened like right away. So I got my disc uh, a couple of days ago, You're like middle of, of last week, like almost right after. Like right after we recorded Joint Failures, I think I got like the uh-huh. disc the next day or so. And uh, you I just... You can keep it. Huh? You can yeah. keep it, it but comes it comes in, from Netflix. comes in a special Netflix envelope. That so says, don't even think about returning. Yeah, if you send this back, we'll we'll send some thugs to uh, beat you up. Right. And it comes in the envelope, but the envelope doesn't have like a, 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 a adhesive sticky like most Netflix mm-hmm. envelopes do. So you put this, it's a Blu-ray disc, you put it in the PS3, and uh, it's it takes a couple of seconds to start up because uh-huh. it's like a Blu-ray. They, you know, maybe yeah. 20, 30 There's seconds. an activation code you have to use. Yeah, so it launches immediately into the Netflix dashboard, which mm-hmm. is a, which we've learned is like a BD Live type application. And the first it comes to is you must go to netflix.com slash ps3 and activate your device mm-hmm. and they give you a little code you right. put that corresponding code into netflix and that's how it links to your netflix account that way they know what your queue is and things like that and what's great about that though is it's like currently currently with the xbox and the tivo you can't update your queue right from the system you have to go to your it. machine your right. computer uh, which is a big pain queue. in the butt well yeah because if you're already sitting down with the bowl of popcorn your remote and you have the tv right. on and you're like oh crap i gotta go right. update my queue yeah and what kind of crappy movies am i gonna watch? <laughs> not so much on the 360 but uh-huh. on the tivo i've noticed sometimes there's a 15 to 30 minute delay before the tivo gets the new queue mm-hmm. so i've been I like that. yeah no i wanted to watch a documentary so i did that same oh crap so i went to my machine added it mm-hmm. went back to the tivo went to the thing wasn't in the list Went back like 15 minutes later, still wasn't in the list. Went back a half hour later, it was finally in the list. I've never, I personally have never encountered that problem. It's always showed up almost immediately. Well, yeah, maybe it was a one-off thing. Then, but, but, but yeah, no, I, I know, I can um, understand what you're talking about. And then, uh, so the PS3's interface is, uh, it's a little uh, slicker. It's mm-hmm. bigger. It had the the uh, the DVD artwork is big there. and and Chris, takes takes nice. takes center stage. Blu-ray clear. If you uh, <laughs> if you if you've ever used Windows Media Center, there's a couple of Netflix plugins, and it kind of looks like those a little bit. But one leg up that mm-hmm. the PlayStation 3 has over the 360 and the TiVo, like you were saying, is because you can manage the queue, they don't just have your queue and a couple other stuff on there. They have, like, the categories are on there. Right. So, like, you can just I, browse everything. I can go to TV, and uh-huh. I can just see all the latest TV, and I can see, oh, look, uh, the latest season of Heroes is up, and I just mm-hmm. go right there. It's really kind of nice. Mm-hmm. Weekend of Bernie's. Weekend of Bernie's, too. You bet, buddy. It's a repeat. Oh, yeah. Uh, so. Props to the Netflix people and mm-hmm. the PlayStation folks for getting that out, and it looks like a great implementation. Yeah, it does um, really look good. And the Xbox will be doing this soon, too. The update um, is coming like n- soon, which adds Twitter and Facebook, also adds uh, Netflix queue management. Mm-hmm. No. Now, we should also talk about um, a couple games that come out as far as uh, media. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah which we didn't put on right. our topic list, but I we didn't. discussed. Um, we have uh, Modern Warfare 2 just came out. Yeah. And Left 4 Dead 2 came out. Right. Which and we neither were, of us own. But we, we're, we love both. We both franchises. really love the franchises. Uh, and uh, hearing big, good things. Big big Call of Duty. I don't mm-hmm. think there's been there's ever been a Call of Duty I haven't at least owned. Yeah. Um. And they're fun. And Left 4 Dead. And Modern Warfare One was amazing. Yeah. That, we we both spent some time on that. And and we spent a little. I spent a little bit of time on Left 4 Dead. You spent Me more t- time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But great great game. Mm-hmm. And um. The while while we haven't played either one. Uh, the Call of Duty game had a little bit of controversy. Right, right. Um, because they had a public service announcement type ad that was offensive. Yeah, so tell me a little about it because I heard that there was a PSA and I heard that they kind of put their foot in the I didn't hear the details, but what happened oh, there? Well, pretty much in their ad, it says, like they say, like fight against grenade spammers or right. spam. And um, they capitalize the first letter of each word so there, F- which spells out F A G S. Ah. So. And got, there's no reason to capitalize the first letter of each word. It just seems like that was something that would not get by their advertising. No, they capitalized. Did they change the color? No, they didn't change the color. Well, no, come on. But you can still you can still see it pretty easily. I don't know. Sometimes you're looking for stuff. I think in that case, it doesn't seem. Uh, may, maybe part of it is. It of just course, seems like I mean, you just have to be careful in that kind of stuff. Or or was it done intentionally to generate buzz? Probably more likely. Because, you know, I mean, really, they can Not get that it. they need it. I mean, the people who want this game are already going to be buying this game. For sure. Like, maybe they weren't aware that it was coming out so soon. It's but a multi- maybe you know, that, but the gaming industry is so many billions of an industry, and mm-hmm. and big titles like this where they, they... It's got almost like a movie budget where they, you know, they'll probably... They probably have people coming up with viral marketing campaigns, you know, for mm-hmm. like a million bucks, and that's like a deal. Right. Um, and Left 4 Dead 2 also had a little bit of... So did they redact that uh, commercial, or what happened there? 
Um, you know, actually, I'm not sure how that mm. ended. I think, I think, you know, when those kind of, I, maybe it's, you know, maybe I'm being a little bit of a cynic, but I kind of think that stuff's mm-hmm. done intentionally. I, you know. I, I don't know. And, and of course, if uh, I was uh, gay, I'd probably have a problem with it. But as right. it is, I just don't, <laughs> I don't really <laughs> care, but I can understand. I can see would, how it would be offensive. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it is a derogatory term. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Left 4 Dead 2, uh, we played, um, did we play it? I don't remember if we got our Did you get a chance to play it at PAX? Uh, I recorded it uh, yeah, against, I did too. against people's wishes, but I did record it. That's right. Um, but yeah. I, I snuck some footage. It basically looked like the first Left 4 Dead, but with more. It looked a little bit better. It looked a little bit yeah, A little better. bit, yeah. It but it, it's still, you know, it's the same game pretty much. It's similar feel, and, and they've added some things. And there were, the controversy for Left 4 Dead 2, and I'm sure people who are familiar with Left 4 Dead know, is that it came out so soon after the first one, so people feel like, you know what, this should have just been like add-on content. You know, it's just some like but additional level. Like full, it's not like full sixty dollars, is it? Isn't it like a little cheaper than an app? Than I don't game? think. I think it's. I think it's oh, same okay. price as a normal game. All right. But they did do like you know, there's there's new levels. There's there's new um, special zombies to fight. It's. I like you know. There, there's there's upgrades. Honestly, so it, from what I understand. the game, the, the great thing that I like about the Left 4 Dead game is. First of all, killing zombies is great. Yes. But, uh, and that's just, you know, entry level right there. That's, that's your foundation is Let killing zombies. Let me guess what your second thing is. Well, uh, Chris is scared to play games by himself. Yeah. <laughs> they scare me. <laughs> uh, well, what I like is the way they handle the, op- the ability to multiplay with uh, other people or solo play. Right. So they have AI bots that basically mm-hmm. are on your team uh, mm-hmm. that automatically just fill in whoever's not playing. Right. So if it's just you, then you get, what is it, three or four other? It's, it's three other people. Three other bots. Four dead. And then if I... Oh yeah, and yeah. then if I jump in with and we co-op, uh-huh. then I just replace one of the bots. Right, and that's and that's great, and they handle it so well. And the I mean, bots are not before, useless bots. Yeah, they're they're good. Sometimes you know, anytime you have an AI in a game, it gets sometimes a little annoying. There's mm. there was one circumstance where like I got knocked off a bi- uh, off of a off a roof, and then I fell down and got murderized by a bunch of zombies. Right, but I had so, nothing to do with your own play ability. N- no, because uh, yeah. I uh, t- I am amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm like a like <laughs> right, a right. master artist with uh-huh. that controller, um, but. When they, uh, you know, but that's one instance. Otherwise, mm-hmm. those bots, you know, they're 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 pulling their own weight. Mm-hmm. They're killing guys like 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 nobody's business. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a great balance to the game. Well, what's great about it is that you know you don't always have like sometimes you want to play with people in the room next to you, and you need four people to play the game. So yeah, they do the bots, and it, they do it well, which is and which is key, vital to the success of the game. Yeah. So yeah. which is really what you just said, but but um. But it's nice. Going to, it's, online, it's refreshing to see it, and then and then just and then just the very elegant, simple swap of mm. human for AI, and you get to pick which AI person, which character you want to be, right. and it's just well, it's, just it's how well vital done. teamwork is is what, what makes a game mm-hmm. good. You just there's no way to play it by yourself, and that's a although, good thing and I like this a lot if I recall correctly. Kind of like basically at the end of a, uh, end of a map, uh, which are right. big. They're not like quick little deals. They're, they're no, they're long. They're long. Drawn they're out big. maps, yeah. And it's like you know zombie zombie invasion, and then mm-hmm. but like you helicopter out or something like that, and you can leave people behind, right? Your teammates. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I generally die right at the end as on my way to the helicopter. And the, the team first leaves you behind. Or, yeah. Well, like, I remember guys, when, when, guys, you, when, me. when you and I played. I think we had to end up leaving like an AI character behind because they just got wrapped up in a situation. I'm like, no, that was here. me. That was me. Oh, was it you? <laughs> it was, it was me. So me and the AI characters were on the helicopter. I, I think you're remembering this way wrong. I think the AI characters made it and we died. Oh, <laughs> awesome! Right. Uh, all right. Screw those guys. Uh, Which speaks again nothing of our playability. It's it's all uh, right. Those other guys screwed us. We are artists with those mm-hmm. controllers. It was not our fault. So those games come out, and since we haven't played it, and, but if you have, I'd love to hear from you. Mm-hmm. Buy it or not buy it, let yeah, us let know. Yeah, let us know. What let do you know. think? And if you guys really like the game, then I'm, I'm going to have to pick it up. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you are now in charge of my credit card. All right. <laughs> so uh, moving on, um, if, if you uh, watch Mad Men, um, minor spoilers possibly. We're going to try mm-hmm. to keep them light, but Mad Men just wrapped um, uh, this week, right? Or last yeah, week? Yeah, no, yeah, this last Sunday. 13 episode season and mm-hmm. um, it, it, the show is just... Uh, um, it's a great show. It's a great it's show. really good. And there was some... Um, there was some... We covered it. There was some concerns that this ep- this season was moving a little slow, but uh, the last few episodes... Yeah, some people said that it was it kind of like jump the shark or, or you know, there's just there are things. And what... I'm sure what got people to jump the shark is, I think we mentioned this, it, is that there's a part where someone loses a His foot. foot. Yeah. I, which I didn't have a problem with at all. No, I didn't either. I thought it was funny in um, some weird Pulp fiction way. One of the things that happened in these last few episodes, uh, maybe like three, three ago or so, two mm-hmm. or three, um, is uh, they had to deal with uh, President Kennedy being assassinated. Right. And which we, we knew the show was going to have to do eventually yeah. because of the time period that it takes place mm-hmm. in. And mm-hmm. how, what did you think of that? 
What, what? You know, I thought it was done well. You know, they, not to spoil anything, but there's like a wedding that happens like the day after, you know, he dies. Yeah. And they just, how they handle that and how they handle like people reacting to it. Yeah. And it's it's done great, I think. I, I, I think they did it with class. You know, I, they didn't I, make it like a huge spectacle, but they, they had to acknowledge it. And they just kind of watched, you know, the people reacting to it. I was actually kind of moved by it. And I, that never happens really with TV shows. You know, usually it's like some special movie where I'm like, whoa. So you think people are going to be like, where were you when you watched The Mad Men where Kennedy died? Uh, no, I don't think so. No? But I will go in my list of TV shows that impacted me. Just Right. Uh, the, way, the way that they integrated the radio broadcast and the TV broadcast of the time mm-hmm. uh, was powerful right. and done well mm-hmm. and um, not, not distracting from the show. It integrated very nicely. The, the, the characters' reactions to it... Um, while I wasn't alive in that time period, just speaking with family members and uh, uh, and uh, reading comments online is a lot of people were like, I was a kid when that happened, and that's exactly how my parents reacted. Mm-hmm. And it it was it was like almost like looking through the time window and and looking at that period of time. And that's what's so great about Mad Men is it because they pay that they they pay respect to the period and they pay attention to detail and then. Also, you just you have quality actors on it really every yeah. level. I mean, yeah. even the, like the bit parts are are generally done well. Even the one time you know guest stars are incredibly well cast, mm-hmm. and um, they uh, are always very very top notch. I totally agree with you. I think mm-hmm. it's I think it's one of the things they excel at in that show. And and it it manages in retrospect now mm-hmm. that. While it felt for some for the first maybe half of the season maybe not quite it felt slow but in retrospect a ton of crap happened oh yeah and and granted it's it a did, character show it did happen towards the end I mean there's a lot of big things that paid off in the end the yeah, last like maybe three episodes but you know like uh, uh, um, uh, Betty's dad died fairly mid season mm-hmm. and that's kind of a big deal really I mean the, 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 for that character yeah if. If if you're okay if you're okay with the idea of a character driven show, not a show that's like mm-hmm. you know stealing or a show that's like uh, uh, some sort of we're doing this thing, right. but a, a show that's really about exploring the time and the people, mm-hmm. um, then then it's kind of a big deal and it's it was done so well. And one of the things I really liked is uh, just jumping forward again to the mm-hmm. to the Kennedy death is the way the characters found out about mm-hmm. his death seems so legitimate. Yeah. Because, you know, and it made me realize, like, no cell phones, mm-hmm. you know, no Twitter, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and, and There's TV, newspapers, and word of mouth. And then that's what happens. And it really, you know, you really see an action there. Like, uh, there's some people, like, one of the things that happened is uh, the main character, Don Draper, he walks into his office, and, like, the office is empty. Mm-hmm. And, like, nobody's there. It's a powerful moment. It, and you just kind of get the feeling of, like, what this has done to everybody. Because it's this busy call mm-hmm. center that's always buzzing with people and always the, always all this different, like, action going on. Mm-hmm. And he steps into it, and it's empty. And you realize, because, you know, it's 1963, there's, like, only two TVs in the whole building. And one right. of them is in one of the, the guy that's just getting into commercials. And mm-hmm. uh, everybody's, like, in the, crammed into this office, like, glued to the TV. And he doesn't know about it yet. Because he's been yeah. involved in something else, and it's just, mm-hmm. it's like, wow. Other stuff going on, yeah. Yeah, so. It's fascinating. It's I, a, just such a good show. It has nothing to do with science fiction. Not not even really that nerdy, unless you count attention to detail nerdy. Well, I, no, but, totally. And I, I, I exactly think that's what it is. They geek out on the 60s. They geek out on the detail. Mm-hmm. They geek out on building complex situations and, and then uh, rewarding the viewer with... Uh, it, it's one of those things where, like, sometimes there's some shows where something happens, and you're like, oh, this could be down the road, and then yeah. it, like, never plays out. Right. There's always a payoff, is there's, the thing. Exactly. At least there appears to be. If yeah. there's, when there's not payoffs, I don't notice them. You know, it's not, not anything about yeah, me. I can't really think of a time where something hasn't mm-hmm. uh, paid off. They have and, a big picture in mind, is, is what I feel with the mm-hmm. show. It, it really does feel like there's mm-hmm. a big picture, and it, it doesn't feel like it's Monster of the Week type, type show. Yeah. So it's a good show. <laughs> uh, there are no monsters. No. Um, other than people's own personalities. All right. <laughs> and own demons. So let's talk about something that I know nothing about. Okay. But let's wrap up our... This is the last thing for our media section, right? Uh, think I so? think so. All right. Let's talk about V. Okay. Well, V has aired twice now. I've only caught the first episode. And um, as I'm sure most of you realize... People are, just as I noticed, people are discussing it over at JupiterColony.com if you're interested. Mm-hmm. It's, so. it's a... So far, I enjoy the show, but it is a remake of uh, a somewhat people kind of cult classic, kind of campy, to be honest, um, show that aired in the 80s. 
Okay. And, and what's it about? It's about aliens, right? It's about these aliens come to Earth, and they're like, hey, you know what? We look just like you. We're really nice people. Uh, let us help you in this way. We want some stuff from you, and then we'll take off. You know, we what want, do they like want? Some, they just want some like resources. Like, hey, you got pl- you got plenty of this stuff here. We'll we'll, we'll take off. It hasn't really gone into detail in the first, first okay. episode. Okay. Now, but, do you um, know what those resources are from the original show? Um, you know, I don't actually. Oh. I I, so I watched just, it a long time ago. But so it was they're a hanging long out for me. Basically, yeah. they're not probably going to leave, right? Well, they're not really friendly. They seem really friendly, oh. but guess what? They're lizard people. Guess what? So they're wearing like spoiler a, they're alert. They're, they're like, lizard people. They're wearing like a human mask. Yeah, but and so the thing is, is like you know they they talk they bring it up even in the first episode. Like, guess what? These people have been here for a while. They've been watching us for a while. Oh. So you have kind of like the paranoia. You don't know who's good and bad. So you got the you got the reveal that oh man, these people have been on Earth a long time. Yeah, well that's what you know. There's there's a few people who realize that they're bad and they're like, hey, we got to stop these guys. They've been causing you know like some of them are terrorists. They've been causing discord. They've been causing all these problems. They're not really here to help us. Oh, so they've been screwing with things. They've been screwing with things mm. basically. That's interesting. And it is interesting. And, it, and what you could compare, I guess, is, is there's, there's going to be the paranoia in the show, and you can already tell that, that um, Battlestar Galactica had with the Cylons looking like humans because you don't know who's good and who's bad, which and is an interesting be, concept. That but can I be think done well. It can be done well. It, we all, a, it might be a little tired. documented our problems with it on Battlestar Galactica, yeah. but, but yeah. it se- so far it seems like they're doing okay. There's some cheesy parts I noticed in the pilot. There's one guy who is an alien and is fighting for humans because he's in love with a human girl and it was kind of cheesy. Yeah, okay. That part was bad. Yeah. And then you have uh, Marina Bakarin, I think that's how you pronounce the name, from, who's uh, in Firefly. Yeah. And so, yeah. she is the leader of the aliens. She was the prostitute in Firefly. Yeah, she was. Yes. And um, what's, what's good so about her performance So she's the leader is, of the aliens? Yes. She's, she's an alien. Leader, she is an alien and she's a leader, yeah. Or is she a human? No, no, no. Okay. no. They, they can aliens, reverse swap. Like a lot of them say, you know what? I'm an alien. We do you ever see like her you. as a lizard? Have well, have I, like I said, lizards? I haven't seen the second one, but you probably won't for a while. That's what my guess is. I'm wondering but how she doesn't do in the first one. You haven't so far. You've seen, um, God, what's his name? Like uh, Alan Turdick? Is that his name? Tudick. Uh, he's he's in it as a guest star. Alan Tudick sounds familiar. What's he he's uh, Wash in Firefly. He's oh, in it too. okay, yeah. And he plays uh, a bad I alien like guy, and you see a little bit of his alien face. You see like a lizard eye kind of when he gets injured. but Like the Terminator eye. Just from the previews of uh, the week, that the one that just aired, um, he's back to life. Somehow. Okay. So, so they're, they're resilient might, aliens. They might have some healing Resilient going on reptilians. There. Huh. And, uh, but anyway, going back to Marina Becker and, or Becker and or however you pronounce her name, hot alien, um, <laughs> Uh, her performance is great because she's, you know, obviously a villain, but she's doing it with a really subtle performance. So it's just, it's not really like she comes off as very likable, you know. But the without, villain like, is she playing like the type of villain who doesn't think they're a villain? They think they're they're doing a good thing, but they're just their means are have to be a little shady. Not really. I mean, I, I think that like she's, I mean, she realizes I'm sure that she's screwing, she's going to screw over the human race, but for her, she's. You know, it's for her, for her race, yeah, yeah, so yeah but but yeah. still, I mean, it's kind of like shady still. But but good, but, but, but I always think very subtle good bad guys don't think they're bad guys. Right. Well, I guess I guess that would kind of apply to this. I mean, I think she realizes mm-hmm. she doesn't like humans. But, yeah, yeah. But well, who does? Yeah, yeah. I don't. So, so you have her. You have a uh, actor Scott Wolf from I think he was in Party Five. I don't know. Um, you have a uh, you have Juliet from Lost. Whatever her uh-huh. name is, she's actually watching. Oh, right. This is level. what she was leaving Lost for, was the yeah, show. Yeah, but apparently she's still ah, going to be in Lost, right. too. Spoiler alert. I don't, I sh- now, I don't, is I don't this, know how. Do you know, uh, not to interrupt, but this, just before I forget, um, mm-hmm. do you know, I've heard a lot of people talking about uh, what is ABC going to do when V goes off the air? Is it like a short season or something? No, I think it's going to get preempted by the Olympics. I think uh, is what's happening or, or something like that, which is bad for the show. you heard how the show's doing ratings-wise? I, I don't know, actually. Okay. All right. I think it's, I think it's doing okay. So you like it, though? I liked the first episode. With, you know, it had some flaws, but pilots generally do. You know, there's generally yeah, some yeah. things that yeah. need to be resolved. I haven't watched the second one. I have it on my TiVo now. It's time I had time to watch it. Just recorded last night. So, all right. But I'm I'm excited to watch it. I, I see it past it right away. Does it look good? I mean, it does look have good. Have you seen any? Again, it's the pilot, so they're going to spend more money. Oh, that's but true. you know, you see like these huge alien ships. You see. Oh, so you do uh, see some, see some explosions. I, I did notice there's like a car crash, like because because when they first come, there's like kind of some destruction that just. Is accidental, they say, but but so there's like some you know crashes and stuff, and that looked a little CG. I mean, it was a little obvious on CGI, but that's kind of typical with network programs. I mean, you're going to kind of yeah. yeah. There's only more. so much money to spend, yeah. So uh, I I think it looked pretty pretty good as a whole. Um, right. I'll the check it out. the big alien spaceship looked good. 
I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll check it out. I, I was giving Defying Gravity, I think it was, on, on ABC for a shot where they are doing the ship to Venus. Yeah. Or whatever it was, something Venus. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't stick with it. It was bad. You know, I loved the idea. I really actually love the concept of traveling to another planet and like it's the a long journey happening. and some something weird's going on, but it just was. It's a really cool concept, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But it, I mean, like, there's a lot you could do with that. I think. I mean, because you're gonna have like the captivity problems, um, just being on a spaceship for a while. Oh yeah, I know. It was just like other random crap that you can throw at yep, them. Yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. It, it, it was. It was. Like it was a good idea. I just. I didn't. I. Couldn't I, get into I it? even got behind a lot of the show. It was just uh, there was, you know, like. Uh, you know a character, you know a character, you know a character. Oh, by the way, today we decided to make him an alcoholic and because he's in, he's on the spaceship. There's no booze, and so now he's really cranky. And now he's <laughs> he's cranky for a couple of days, and he's cool. And I then, want a drink. And then weird tension, weird tension, weird tension. Oh, this guy's gay. And this person has slept with that person. And that person knows about They're that right. person. So they just you know, did too much bap, like... Bap, bap, and I'm like, four episodes in and I'm like... Arbitrary relationship stuff or arbitrary yeah. history stuff. That's too bad. And you know what? Honestly, too, I'm just getting burnt out on the flashback thing. I realize it's a good tool to tell a story, but I'm done with the flashbacks. You know, they. O- I agree that they overuse it in some ways. I mean, Lost kind of was really one of the... I don't want to say the first people to do that, but I mean, use it as like a big storytelling device. Right. And a lot of people jumped on Lost success with that and... Uh, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is um, I'm not tired with it in Lost. I don't think. Maybe I get tired like mid-season or so. But like, As long as it's useful. I mean, I am a big defender of Lost, but they had a lot of useless flashbacks. Um, the one that's often cited is Jack's tattoos. Like, who the hell cares why Jack Oh, totally. Tattoos? Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, the worthless ones really, really yeah. bug me. But like when they do a good job, it, it's interesting enough. And it's, it's an interesting way to bring in characters mm-hmm. uh, that aren't on the island anymore. Anyways, okay. So not, not talk about... Because Lost... We'll talk about Lost when Lost comes out. Right. Uh, the, you know, I just want to give a shout out real quick before we move to Global Warming. How, how come I'm the only guy watching Smallville? It's not that bad. <laughs> You're not the only guy. You're o- the only guy over 15 watching Yeah, that's true. Now. That's a good point. And you know what? It's the CW's like highest rated show. Like it's doing great on Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is great for Smallville. Uh-huh. And it, I thought it's been, I think it's been pretty good this season. It's been good? You know, yeah. You know, I used to love it. I used to like, like it a lot and I just, I'm really hesitant well, you know now. Like, got I just over, got so got over, over the, the show. They got over the whole bar of, do I want to be a superhero? Do I not want to be a yeah. superhero? And he's just, He's a superhero now. He's not Superman, right? But he's a superhero, and he has a superhero costume, and he changes. Right. In, he changes in phone booths, which well, <laughs> Lois started to really bother me. Yeah, and Clark was getting on my nerves. She is a she plays a major role in the show now. Although I also really did not like her, and she does not bother me this season. And I don't know yeah. if she's um, a little less um, dopey. I don't know how to pronounce how to describe it. She's just tongue in little... cheek. I don't know. She just was really bugging me. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then Chloe, I just wanted gone. I just Kept, they kept teasing that they were going to kill her. Like, they know what we want. They're just right. not doing it. What they've done with the Chloe character now is they have... So they've integrated in the Green Arrow. Right. And, and she's got a relationship with him or something? She, well, they're, they're buds. But she watches... She uses... She has a, a thing called the Watchtower, which is like this building in, in Metropolis. Uh-huh. And she's like monitoring the Luther Corp. And she's monitoring different stuff. And so she's kind of like... She's kind of like their agent back at headquarters that gets them the information that they need. She's like super hacker. It's a little annoying sometimes. But... You know, right. she has a role. She has a function. Okay. Well, is Kryptonite still just falling off the shelves over in Metropolis and Smallville? Because that that bothered me too. It was just like everywhere. You know what? I think they only used Kryptonite once this season, and that was because they had to put a needle in Clark's arm, so they dipped it in liquid Kryptonite. Well, that's acceptable. Once, dude. That's acceptable, and, and that like, is a huge change. I yeah, because well, you're right. It was like every episode. It was yeah. like they even had a Kryptonite gum episode. They, that's ridiculous. And yeah, I'm sure it was sponsored too. It was. Yeah. Because it, it was at a, it was at a, it was like at a gum God. warehouse, and God. there was like a, a kryptonite crack in the floor, and it's just stupid. <laughs> Why so would stupid. Wrigley's Delicious Gum do this to us? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I uh, remember a kryptonite lake, and I was like, eh, yeah. it's kind of yeah. No, they've been a lot better about that. That's um, I didn't Superman even three. They're supposed to pull it from space, or I completely forgot about about that aspect. So that's how yeah. much better it is. Well, that's good. That's yeah. that says a lot. And I'm not actually, saying it's a good show. I'm more than anything that. else you can say that'll probably. Push me towards maybe watching it again. You know why? Is and it's kind of a cool concept. Not to keep going on about this, but <laughs> it's kind of what they're doing is the main protagonist or whatever. Uh, the the main villain is uh-huh. is uh, Major Zod, not General Zod, but Major Zod. Hmm. Who? Uh, it's a long backstory, but it works, and it's a younger version of Zod and his army. It's an army at this point, right? And uh, 
they uh, don't have powers, and there's a reason for it, but they're trying to get powers, and um, so he is like the main bad guy, and uh, that's so instead of having a villain of the week, it's a story arc, and okay. it's instead of instead of you know the kryptonite of the week making the bad guy, it's you know going up against Zod and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's. That's way better, and again, would push me to watch it. Yeah. But now that we're, we've uh, talked about Smallville, let's talk about Twilight for 30 minutes. No. <laughs> it's not Twilight. It's not okay, Twilight. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Why don't we move on to kind of the heavy topic? We've, we've, uh, we've um, kind of taken on a little bit of a, a political section in, in joint value. Yeah. Because just we've gotten some good feedback. Debatable. And, and we think it's stuff a good way to it. engage with uh, you folks out mm-hmm. there in the audience. So uh, right. one of the topics that just doesn't ever seem to go away, so it would kind of, if we we're talking about politics, we'd be kind of avoiding it not to talk about it. And uh, that is the issue of global warming or climate change, whatever you want to call it. Um, mm-hmm. Now, yes, this is a difficult topic to talk about. It sure is, Chris. And I've been trying to think of why is it so hard to talk about global warming? What is so difficult about it? And you know what it is? It's, it's because any- climatologists have degrees and they're still yeah. have questions about it. Well, oh, for sure. Most, well, most of the scientific community does not have any doubts about global warming. Now, here is kind of, uh, before we go into that, because I have a response to that. Um, okay. Um, uh, I would call myself a global warming agnostic. Okay. And, and that is from pretty far on the side of global warming is effing this S up. But before I go into that, what I will say <laughs> is um, it, it's difficult anytime you get into something that turns into uh, a couple of different things. First of all, there's, it's almost, a, for some people, a religion. And mm-hmm. There's people out there that are, are you know, defacing SUVs. And, and then there's people right. out there that are like, you know, crazy, rabid, uh-huh. uh, and you have anti-global to, warming. We have to come into it with an open mind is what, right. is what we had to do. And, and then the other thing that makes it difficult is it's also become political. You know, generally, mm-hmm. uh, the left leans towards uh, global, bl- warming. global warming and the right doesn't. Mm-hmm. And so now that's, you know, then there's that tearing between it. And then also on top of that, there is big industry on both sides of it. There's a yeah. ton of money to be made from people making money off of global warming mm-hmm. and there's a ton of money people obviously a ton of money for people against global warming right so you kind of have to siphon through what's what they're paying yeah. who they're sponsoring mm-hmm. and it's a really difficult thing uh now so we did some minor research we did we did we we thought we thought well let's just fail and not just before the show no that's true <laughs> let's just fail a little bit when well, we're right. still gonna fail no no we will still fail in a major way yeah. it'll just be slightly less than it would have been right had we not researched this we just want to give everybody out there an opportunity right. to correct us right. Uh, right so you know um and one of the things is learn the, to read right my, so my basic just to set a baseline maybe we should both do this okay is maybe my basic understanding of of the uh the pitch for global warming is mm-hmm. the cause is essentially is there is an excess amount of of CO2 and other types mm-hmm. of compounds, not just CO2. It's, uh, you know, uh, it's carbon, and carbon dioxide is obviously one of them, but there's methane. There's all different types of things going out in the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sun, its rays are hit the earth, and, yes. and then what they do is some get through and some get bounced off the, this, this layer that's now mm-hmm. in the atmosphere. But uh, alternatively, the ones that get through go down to the surface of the earth, and instead of bouncing back off into space... You're trapped in this, the CO2. Right, so that's right. essentially my understanding. And it's yes. not just CO2, but... There's other things, even water, even even moisture right. will trap. So, I mean, that's right. something that you have to consider, too. Right, and so that is... So what the argument there is is that uh, man has, you know, obviously 200 years ago, there weren't as many cars on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, man has... You weren't burning... As much coal, like right. I mean, just everything right. we've just amped up quite a bit, right? And from my understanding, the flip side of the argument is is essentially uh, the Earth and the Sun go through cycles, right? About every fifteen hundred years, they say. That's right, uh, according to what we listen to. And, right. and right. the thing is, is we're kind of generalizing because there's also specific different theories of different pros and and, and right. against. So, uh, but so generally, what they're what the with the argument against the sun rays coming in and not bouncing out is, well, you know what? The earth goes through these 1500 year cycles. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, the natural progression of like the strength of the sun and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff has way more to do with anything we do. And, and what the people that are against global warming say is that, look, at best, 
humans are putting out three to five percent of the what's in the atmosphere mm-hmm. right now. Everything else comes from natural sources. And right. And uh, one this of was the, hap- they say this was happening anyway. This was happening before this. You know, there's this huge lead up. I, I don't right. remember what the lead up is. It's uh, like six hundred years, nine hundred years, or six something eight to, like eight that. to nine hundred years. And what they say is is that uh, the major source is the ocean because the physics of water is cold water can mm-hmm. absorb more CO2 than warm water does. Right. So when the sun gets into, you know, when the earth and the sun get in this, uh, uh, this mm-hmm. little dance that they do and the sun is beating down on the earth more, causing it to warm up, there is this 800 year ramp up before the oceans go up to a certain mm-hmm. temperature level and because they become warmer, cannot retain the same amount of CO2 and begin releasing it into the atmosphere. Then they release into the atmosphere and then mm-hmm. what happens is is because things like plant life thrive off the CO2, and once it gets up oxygen, there, they start down they start pulling it out right, exactly. And right, it's a cycle. right. So that's the cycle, which makes sense, I will say. And they say that there's proof that there's cycles and they can tell through like deposits on the ocean floor, like all these different things, like tree, yeah, and trees every, and, yeah. yeah, all this stuff. And they say that they took like they took different areas and they looked at uh, I don't know how. I have mm-hmm. no idea how they do this. Maybe some sort of DNA sampling of trees. Mm-hmm. Magic, probably. Probably yeah. magic. Um, the gathering. But they, they, like, they say, take Chicago. It's just an example. Uh, they have like, there's periods where there's pine trees in Chicago for colder weather. Mm-hmm. Then there's sort of like uh, oak trees for slightly warmer. And then at right. some point, there was even beech trees, like palm trees, mm-hmm. when it was really warm. And then the whole process started over again, oak trees and then pine trees. And they right. say they can prove that you know there's been several mm-hmm. of these cycles through that People period. People also say the sun itself gets has hot and cold cycles. Right. And that we're currently in a hot cycle. Right. Um, and the other argument is, and this I've heard disputed a lot, but I'm just going to put it out there, is that if you if you really analyze the data that, say, like Al Gore or, mm-hmm. or, or somebody else who's pro-global warming looks at it, if you really analyze the data, our warming trend peaked at 1940, Mm-hmm. And it's actually slow. Now I don't know if that I, I don't know that either. But I, I have I have heard counterclaims to that. Now like our everything. problem our problem is that our most of our pro global warming uh, information is from an inconvenient truth. A right. lot of the when we were just trying to find this, most of what we got was anti global warming. Well, which we listened to, but a lot of it a lot of it you know was you know directly disputing stuff in global uh, in in the inconvenient mm-hmm. truth. Um, right there. Uh, <sighs> So now I will say that the like the leading scientists, their study, uh, their their organization says that there is about a ninety percent chance that global warming is is you know right. has a high percentage to deal with, what, with what you, which I've leaves heard, a ten percent chance that it's not. And I've I think a lot of people are clinging to that. Is uh, what I've heard is that there, so there's like a like I think what you're referring to because I think a lot of people refer to is like a consortium of scientists who got together mm-hmm. and signed off on some basic theories that support the evidence of global warming. Now, what I read, and I don't know if it's true, but what I but they're read... they're not climatologists? That only 10% of them were climatologists. Mm-hmm. So... Well, how many scientists are there total? I mean, we don't, we don't know that yeah. kind of information. No, I know. I, I mean, just, if, there's, if there's 200 in there and 20 of them are climatologists and they're coming to that conclusion, maybe it's something that we could, you yeah. know, think about. But... Yeah. I think, though, I mean, if you look at data, it, the Earth is warming. Mm-hmm. I don't think you could even really so much as dispute that as you can the cause. Correct, and I think what I think what the main root is, is uh, from pro global warming is, this is my impression. Mm-hmm. If it is man made, that's something we can stop and control and get under you know get something mm. figured out right now. If the flip not. side is, if it's not, could we be hurting industry or could we be changing things at, at for a completely unneeded reason? That's just a natural thing the Earth does. Well, as you said, I mean, here's the way I think to look at it is is there's enough industry out there that people are going to profit either way. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. and, no, and if we're using resources that are not infinite, you know, we're using finite resources. I agree. Um, what is really the harm? There's reasons even outside of just global warming to, mm-hmm. to get off, uh, you know, uh, fossil fuels. Right, right. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one of the arguments is, and I don't understand the details behind it, but one of the arguments is, is some of the changes that have been proposed um, would be detrimental to less developed countries and it would it would mean that they were not able to be uh, if their food supply was already an issue it would Mm -hmm. become more of an issue and it would become potentially life or death situations yes I I have heard that argument and I don't I don't know if that's true or not but that's you know 
It's, yeah, some, yeah ex- and it might I think be, extremists on, on the anti-global warming yeah, side are pushing. It is like a religious thing. It's like also, you know, uh, mm-hmm. everything ha- every big issue has this. Even the free software community has like the yeah. Richard Stallmans out there that are very, very, very hard one direction. Mm-hmm. And so you have to try to not, you have to try to find some of the information. You have to kind of, yeah, see in between the lines. There, uh, what, I think what's key is that I, I, I believe that both sides have faulty arguments. And, mm. and you're going to hear these and... Mm-hmm. And one of the ones um, just that's that kind of sides with global warming is real is is, is uh, one of the arguments is anti-global warming is that you know what carbon can only absorb a maximum amount of heat and after that it's just saturated with heat I mean for lack of a better word and that's it you know it's just gonna you can't take any more so everything else is different and that's an argument that anti-global warming people make because they're like you know what after this. It doesn't doesn't matter. It's just carbon. Well, that that and, makes and what's sense. Not, well, it would if if it was just one like one quick layer of uh, carbon. But it's the atmosphere which has many different levels. Right. It's, it just doesn't work that way. Ah. Um, and the other thing too is uh, when you add water droplets, moisture th- that uh, sort of act as like insulation. Mm. And so when you combine the CO2 with these water droplets, it's kind of like this combo effect that the more moisture means uh, more retaining and blocking. Right. So it, it, uh, it's not just the CO2 alone. Mm-hmm. So you have, you have your layers of the CO2, and mm-hmm. then in there, mixed in with that, you have water droplets. Okay. Mist. So, I mean, what we do know is that... The we Earth, act like tiny little mirrors. We, we know that the Earth does have cycles. I mean, we know mm-hmm. that there's ice ages and that, that it does warm up. Oh, did you, see, did you hear or read or wherever? Uh, so uh, just going back to the cycles thing mm-hmm. is the Al Gore uh, uh, Inconvenient Truth cites uh, some, um, some drills of ice that they did in, in the North yeah, Pole. Yeah, the ice cores. Yeah, and then uh, but, but the anti-global warming people derive like completely different data from it. So mm-hmm. they flew down to the South Pole and did another drill. I did hear about that because I actually directed you to the podcast that you heard that from. Oh, that's where it was. So, yes. so what they say is, you know, we've got these two different drills now, and the one we did in the South Pole goes even farther down, 900,000 years, mm-hmm. and uh, that this, con- this sort of backs up our theory that you have a 1,500-year cycle, and we are 800 years or so, we're 600 years or something like that into that 1,500 cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, now, that is some pretty significant evidence on their side because yeah. that's two that's two different ice cores that mm-hmm. basically Conflicting validate data they val- they, well, they, well it validates their stance because mm-hmm. they say well, look we have two different things from two different yeah. ends of the earth that show the same thing they ice agree wars. with our data yeah. ice wars exactly um, now one aspect of this whole global warming thing that I think is totally shady but it's a perfect example of how people are going to make money at this one way or the other mm-hmm. is this whole business of carbon credits has come up and yeah. uh um, uh, I, I believe even uh, who the anti-global warming people have rallied against is uh, Al Gore has stake in a few of these different companies that sell these uh, credits. Now, my understanding is is there's no real oversight of what the money when somebody per- so like so what the idea is is if you're a factory and you put you're producing out, excess carbon, you, what you'll do is you'll go buy credits mm-hmm. to to counterbalance what you're putting out, and the theory would be that then the people take that money and do something with, to improve the environment. Right. Now, I, I have a big problem with this in general, just because... It's a stupid first, idea to begin with. Right. Well, you know what? They did the same thing with mercury. Do you remember that? Yes. They did mercury credits, yeah. and, and yeah. just like, well, you want to put more mercury in the ocean? Yeah, just buy Fine. these credits. Buy these credits. Dude, go back to like the 1600s. The Catholic Church did uh, sin credits, and you could, if you were a sinner, you could buy your way out of oh, yeah. sinning. Yeah, and, yeah. and then, you know, uh, that kind of got a, uh, but I forget, mm-hmm. the, I forget the guy's name to put a stop to that. It's, but anyways, uh, so Jesus. It, it's a, <laughs> it's a long running thing that always just t- 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 sounds like total BS. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is, uh, there's really no oversight of the different companies that people can buy these credits from of what they do with that money. Like right. it just I mean, has that's to be spent problem. on projects is my understanding. Yeah. And projects is not mandated as to what defines a project. Mm. So you could do a project that could be very profitable for you as long as it can in that some way maybe... That project could be investing money in, in the stock market. That project <laughs> could be buying very nice lawn chairs. I mean, it, it is whatever you want to do with that. You know, money. I don't. I don't have the data of what it's being spent on. I'm I don't sure either. But the the problem if it's is, loose, is yeah. one example is is there was uh, uh, this 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 gal that set up a um, climate counseling um, kind of facility where people mm-hmm. that were feeling guilty about their impact on the environment could go see her, and her facility 
was sponsored from some of these climate credits. And basically, it was just like this total hack job that she was doing. And <laughs> she was just making a huge amount of money by telling this organization that, you know, I counsel people on their uh, environmental impact. And it's this total BS setup. Mm-hmm. And she's just getting, she's just raking it in. And so these companies are out there polluting the, 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 the crap out of stuff and buying these carbon credits, mm-hmm. and then she's, she's making you know, a ton of money. Right. And then you have, the, you have, the, you have Mr. Gore, who, uh, is, who flies to do different speeches, which there's no, you got to get there, so he flies on a yeah. jet. Um, and, but every time he flies, he buys carbon, carbon offsets. But the carbon offsets he buys are companies he's invested in. From. Right. So, so comic adventures. I mean, but, and then, then the flip side is you got your Exxon Mobil out there who's going to say, uh, you know, obviously they have a stake in fossil fuels, and so they're going to be anti-global warming. Mm-hmm. So there's, it, it, it sucks, and it's one of these issues where uh, I've I've gone from um, pretty positive to now some doubt, just because whenever I see this kind of shady stuff, I start thinking maybe this is a scam. And that's, whenever that's kind of where I am, I mean, the thing is, is somebody lo- anybody that's a lunatic about it, it always turns me off. Right. Well. The problem with it is, is like we said, is there's profit on both sides. So yeah. you just don't know exactly what Who to, to believe. Who do you believe? Right. And, and that's really, anytime there's profit on both sides, you've got to be really careful. So this is, I just want to mention one thing. So uh, the other argument for pro-global warming is the longer we wait, the harder it's going to be to fix things. Mm-hmm. So uh, Reuters, uh, uh, is that how you say it? Reuters? Yeah, Reuters. Uh, out of, out of uh, the UK, ran a story about the cost of um, every year we delay in any climate change initiative any big thing hundred billion dollars a year yeah so the world so the world will have to spend an extra 500 billion to cut carbon emissions for each year it delays in implementing a major assault on global warming Mm -hmm. the international energy agency said on tuesday which was tuesday of this week um it's it's an interesting article and i'll link to it in the show notes if you're if you are Mm -hmm. pro global warming um i honestly i'm i'm a fence sitter um i i just yeah, I, I wrap my brain up. I figure, I figure, even if humans contribute to five percent at at say at worst of the uh, carbon emissions in in the world, um, you know, an automobile was not something that grew out of nature. My plastic fork was not something that grew out of nature. So I'm introducing something that is not natural to the planet's cycle. I mean, the planet has a, a balance system, mm-hmm. and so while maybe it doesn't hurt anything. But if, I, if there's an area where, say, I can carpool one day, you know, just I'm going to do it because if nothing else, I'm using less resources, sp- saving money, and if I am reducing my, you know, carbon footprint, then so be it. Right. So I think what we come to the conclusion is, first of all, we don't really know, which is strange I'd after love, I'd love to hear one feedback. week of half-assed research. Yeah, I mean, you'd think yeah, after after <laughs> giving it a, a at least a half go at it, yeah. we would have some sort of better information. We don't. <laughs> but uh, maybe some of you, I know, you know, we, somebody we, linked to uh, Penn and Teller's, uh, and I didn't get a chance to watch it. My internet connection mm-hmm. went down, which is strange and um, maybe a little suspicious. But uh, <laughs> my, I didn't get a chance to watch all of it. But um, you know, they were building a pretty good anti case so far. But you know, sometimes they twist it. Yeah, they like to do that. They like to screw with your head. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a bootleg copy up on YouTube, which is um, I'll put it in the show notes and. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear people's opinion. I mm-hmm. know some of you out there have some pretty strong opinions, and we've gotten some good discussion from some of our previous episodes. Yeah. I'd love to hear the feedback. Yeah, on this it's one. been really helpful and really helps the show. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, but so it basically, we just I think we both feel is that it doesn't hurt to try and reduce. Yeah, um, basically, in general. it's like when what 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 are you losing? Had your bets, right? If nothing else, it, it costs it costs me less in a uh, lot of cases. Not always, but it costs me less to uh, to be. You know, a little more conservative in my use, you know. Like mm-hmm. I don't need to. Li- I don't. I have. You know, if I have a light on right now in my office. I probably when we came out into the studio. I probably should have turned that light off. There you go. Why not? Save me money, uh, anyways. One thing I will mention that I think is kind of funny is uh, just an article I, re- I read um, from a different podcast blog talking about how uh, global warming is causing headaches in the sense that more people are using uh, incandescent bulbs, which cause migraines. Yeah, I'm getting one right so, now, actually. So, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's interesting. The slight flickering uh, gives migraines. So I that's do, way up. I, uh, you know, my big problem with global warming, um, people that are really, really passionate about it, mm-hmm. and understandably so if they're totally convinced, but there is this tendency whenever things are going good, and, and comparatively in the States and in most places where this is watched, um, things are going good. For us, right. even if even even you know, com- just comparatively. So you don't have to worry about anything, right? Not, not or is that the exact opposite? I of what think you're going to say? I think man is engineered 
to have guilty. predators and to have things to worry about, uh-huh. you know, to be chased by bears and right. stuff like that. And I think that sometimes we we have to produce something to be scared about, and so or Bear to be trap. guilty about. So uh, it's it's issues that people take, and well, that could be legitimate issues, but they take them too far. Right. And so there's people out there that are really really freaked out about this. And mm-hmm. the truth of the matter is is uh, uh, the Earth. Is, I think one thing probably everybody agrees on is the earth is going to do more than we're, we're ever going to do. There's only so much you can do and you can't get all worked up about it. And that's mm-hmm. what I don't like about where global warming is going is there is kind of like this panic being built up a little bit right. among some. And I would like to say everybody just needs to calm down and be rational. Just, you know, come on, everybody. You got better things to worry about than... than, mm-hmm. than or are we just not scared enough? Maybe. We don't know. Maybe it's like the swine flu is going to kill us all. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right. You were taking so, an ice bath, man. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> it was bad. And that was my it was uh, personal warming, right? Uh, right, right. Not right. global, but personal uh-huh. warming. So, all right, I think we covered pretty much everything we want to sh- uh, cover in this show. Yes, I'd love to hear everybody's feedback on these topics. Uh-huh. Different topics, maybe that you want us to talk about that might have some discussion or debate. Yeah, you bet. Exactly. How about that? All right. Well, thanks so much, everybody, for watching this episode of Joint Failures. We appreciate it. We'll be back next week. Mm-hmm. Joint Failures out. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Saeed. <laughs>